Hello and welcome back. These are some of the most terrifying events people have experienced during the night. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. The weirdest thing I've ever experienced. I live in a small mountain town, and it takes three hours and four mountain passes to get to the nearest city. Pre-COVID, I made that drive two to three times a month, over a period of 10 years. I pretty much had the curves and climbs committed to memory. One night I'm making the drive at 2 a.m. to catch an early flight. Cruising the curves and enjoying the lack of semi-trucks. Left curve, right curve, you know there's a big sweeping curve to the left coming up when all of a sudden I'm driving on a straight road. I'm well aware there isn't a straight section on that highway for another 30 miles. So immediately I'm looking around, trying to figure out where the hell I am. Not a single highway sign on the side of the road. Smack myself a few times to make sure I hadn't fallen asleep. Phone has no service, but that's normal, so I can't check my location. Looking out the window I realize the high desert scrub trees have been replaced with a thick forest. Imagine your headlights picking up dark, heavy, can't see 10 feet, forest that I would imagine in the Pacific Northwest. Something that we don't have here. I'm looking at the clock, and for 15 minutes I'm driving on a straight road through this ominous dark forest when I should be on a curvy mountain pass in the desert. Right about the time I'm going to have a full-on panic attack, that sweeping left curve appears, and I'm out of the forest back in the scrub. So I chalked it up to drowsy driving and an overreactive imagination until it happened again. Two years later, same spot except this time I'm not alone. I had my brother riding shotgun on a similar airport run, and all of a sudden I'm on the straight road. That time it only lasted about five minutes before my brother looked around and asked, where the hell are we? Cue the sweeping left curve appearing and back in the desert. Even though I can't explain it, I'm at least grateful I had a witness. It was late at night. My husband had gone away for the night with friends. My kids were in bed. It was just me awake and reading a book while sitting in my favorite chair in front of a window near the front door of my house. Now it's important to note that we have security cameras and alarms. The cameras activate whenever they detect motion, which frustratingly happens every time the wind blows. Because of this, I had the alarm turned off. On this night, I was sitting there, minding my own business, when a motion detection notification popped up on my phone. I opened the security camera app and almost had a heart attack when I saw a man dressed in all black standing in the shadows beside my front door. Next thing I see him move and peer through the window that I am sitting in front of before trying to quietly pry it open with a knife. I just sat there, paralyzed with fear, staring at the now creaking window. In that moment, I didn't even think of calling the police. My brain was screaming at me not to speak or make any noise but to somehow scare him off. In a moment of clarity through my panic, I remembered the alarm and pressed the button to activate it. The sound rang out, and I watched as he looked up at the camera in shock before running away at top speed. I did end up calling the police, and yes, they ended up catching the guy. We later found out that he targeted us as he knew my husband wasn't home. One of the most terrifying events I've experienced at night happened during a severe storm. I was alone in a cabin in the woods when the power suddenly went out, leaving me in total darkness. The howling wind and relentless rain were bad enough, but then I started hearing distinct footsteps outside, crunching through the gravel around the house. I knew no one else was supposed to be there. The footsteps stopped right by the door, and my heart was racing. After what felt like an eternity, I gathered the courage to peek through a window, but no one was there. To this day, I don't know if it was a person or just the wind playing tricks on my mind. I was sleeping in a friend's apartment four or five stories up, and someone kept knocking on the bedroom window, really loud and urgent. I figured someone was messing with me, so I stood to one side of the window and waited for the next knock. When I heard it, while they were still knocking, I ripped the curtains open in an aha. Gotcha. Moment. And there was no one there. The knocking stopped as soon as I pulled the curtain. No one could have moved out of the way quickly enough for me not to see them when I pulled the curtain back. Further, there couldn't possibly be anyone there. There were no balconies, fire escapes, or pipes to crawl up. No tree branches that could bang against a window. Just a smooth wall and several stories to the ground below. I freaked and ran into my friend's room and slept on the floor. I left in the morning. I grew up in the 90s in a really small village, so safety and parenting were a bit different back then. Anyway, anyways when I was around 10 years old, my parents often went to some neighborhood gatherings and wouldn't come back until after midnight. My mom would come back at my bedtime, ring the doorbell so I could let her in, bring me to bed, and wait till I fell asleep, and then she would go back to the party. One evening in winter, when it was already dark outside, 
my parents were out again and the door rang. It was around the usual time when my mother came back, so I went to the door, but for whatever reason I still don't know, instead of opening the door, I looked out of the kitchen window and saw a guy standing there with a hoodie over his head. I ran upstairs shaking and hid in my closet until my mother came in and searched for me a while later. I told her what happened, but she didn't believe me and thought I was still scared from watching the Blair Witch Project a couple days earlier. I'm 32 now, and my parents still don't believe my story. In my early 20s, I used to live in a house with a few other roommates, and they had all left to go home from school for the summer. My bedroom was on the main floor, and I had a separate entrance with a sliding door. I'd fallen asleep with my light on and woke up at 4 a.m. to the slider door opening. I opened my eyes, and the roommate of a friend of mine was standing inside my room. I sat up and said, what are you doing here? And he just said, I saw your light on. There was no way he was just driving by, I lived in a gated community. Him and his roommate have been over before, so he knew where I lived. I wrapped myself in my blanket, I was sleeping naked, and got up and opened the slider and told him to leave. Thankfully he left, I think because my roommate's cars were still there, so he thought they were home. That was the beginning of him fully stalking me to the point where I ended up moving away. This was over 10 years ago, and I'm still super paranoid about checking my locks before I go to sleep. I was about 5, so around 1995. Dad was off to his brother's funeral, so mom and I bunked up in her bed. I was lying against the wall. The light, which was a touch light, was turned on the lowest setting. There was a window off to our left, and it had plastic blinds on it. Something woke me up, and at first, I thought nothing of it. It was the sound that made me glance over. There was what looked like a hand coming through the blinds. Creeping just as slow as could be. We had a tree crash through the roof when I was a little younger, so I still had nightmares from the monster crashing into my house. I honestly thought I was still asleep. I kept blinking to make sure it was real. But the hand just kept coming. It started with one finger. Then two. Then four. Then the whole hand was in the window and reaching towards us. No longer completely ignorant to being awake, I start slightly shaking my mother. Whispers mom. Shake shake mommy. Shake shake the panic starts setting in. Voice shaking in fear, mom. Mommy. She finally stirs and replies, huh? Still in whispers there is a hand coming through the window. Her, clearly confused, what? I just repeat myself. There is a hand coming through the window. She turns and looks to the left. Then she jumps out of bed, throws up the blinds, and slams the window shut so hard that I'm surprised it didn't break it. Grabs me the phone and runs to the living room to call the cops. Apparently, there had been a rash of break-ins recently, and my dad knew about it. Never told mom. It was hot that night, so she opened the window to let air in. I slept on the couch with her for the next year. I still get panicked if I'm sleeping on the first floor. My blinds are made of noisy wood, and I always keep my windows locked. I put things in front of my doors to make sure no one has been in my house while I sleep. It and other things in my life basically caused years of trauma. Yay, me. Lol. Was alone at home, half asleep in bed, around 3 a.m. Heard a loud thud on my balcony, followed by some sounds near my balcony door. I was immediately awake and already grabbed my phone, just in case, already imagining the worst. Debated for a few moments whether I should open my curtains, stay quiet, or move to a different room. That is, until I noticed the sound of a small bell. No burglar would wear a bell, right? So I went to open my curtains. It was the neighbor's cat, who had jumped on my balcony via the roof. Thoroughly confused because he thought this was his home, and how dare I not open the door for his meowjesty. He clutched around for a bit longer and eventually found his way back home. Silly cat. I was a bigger girl, with big boobs and wild, crazy, curly hair, slept nude, and was living alone in a slightly sketchy neighborhood. I'd had a big argument with my boyfriend over his drinking and broke up with him. Sometime in the middle of the night, I heard someone at my kitchen window. I assumed it was Rob, and I wanted to make certain he learned that his crazy shit wasn't acceptable. I grabbed a baseball bat, leapt sideways through the kitchen doorway, and flipped on the light, all at the same time, while yelling, what the fuck do you think you're doing? It wasn't Rob, it was some guy breaking into the cottage. The sight of a naked girl, boobs and crazy hair flopping, bat raised, cursing, and yelling scared the crap out of him, and he fell backward through the window and took off running. I don't know if it counts. I did an ICU rotation during residency. I was the on-call resident in charge, and I was entering about 48 hours on only about 2 hours of sleep. 
I finally have a quiet moment and start to drift off when an elderly patient codes. Unfortunately, this patient did not have an advanced directive on file, and the family wanted us to use extraordinary measures. Patient was 91 years old, CPR is actually a pretty brutal process. It's nothing like you see on TV, many times ribs are broken. Keep in mind this was a 91-year-old with the bone density of a 91-year-old. Performing CPR on this patient was kind of like popping bubble wrap, sound-wise. Unsurprisingly, the patient was not able to be resuscitated. After things settled and I checked the necessary boxes and dotted the I's and crossed the T's, I went to go lay down again. I begin to drift off, and once again a patient codes. It was the exact same patient. Exact same scenario. With each step I took, I already knew what was going to happen next, down to the distinct sound of the patient's ribs cracking from the CPR effort. Once my shift was over, I went home and slept for about 18 straight hours. To this day, I don't know which one was real and which one was hallucinated slash dreamed. Only time I've ever had anything remotely weird like that happen. I live in an apartment, and over the winter, an elderly neighbor had a medical emergency, and the police and EMS came and kicked his door in at 3.30 am. I, of course, was dead to the world. When it first woke me up, I think they were just knocking really hard, and in my unit, it sounded like someone running up the stairs. Then I hear boom 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 followed by a crash. It shook my bed and was making the picture frames rattle on my wall. I thought someone was trying to break into my apartment, and my instinctual reaction was to grab something and run to the front door. When it was clear it wasn't my apartment, I looked out the window and saw several police cruisers and an ambulance, and I felt like a balloon deflating. I am here to tell you that has to be one of the most terrifying experiences. If someone is pounding on your door at 3.30 am, they're not there to ask if you want Girl Scout cookies. I thought I was going to be hurt or killed. Unfortunately, I had sleep issues for months after that. If someone was walking up the stairs while I was asleep, I'd startle awake and run to the window to see if the police were there. I'd randomly wake up at all hours, probably in reaction to some thud or other noise. I slept like garbage for about three months, rarely getting more than four to five hours of sleep per night, which just isn't enough for me. It suddenly ended in April, and I've been sleeping fine since then. I think that was the only incident where something happened in the night and I thought I was in legitimate danger. Heart attack. I woke up about 3 AM, and I felt like I had indigestion, which was not uncommon, I had acid reflux for a long time. I also had this really bad feeling in the back of my head for no good reason. But my left arm hurt. I knew that I had a family history of heart issues on both sides, so I walked downstairs and googled heart attack symptoms. I didn't have any chest pain, no shortness of breath, just heartburn, a sore arm, and an impending sense of doom. We had triplet one-year-olds, so I knew trying to get my wife up and get kids all dressed would take forever, and I didn't feel that bad and didn't want to alarm my wife. So I told her I didn't feel well and was going to get checked out just in case, it was probably just heartburn. I drove myself to the emergency room. Well, you have those symptoms, you don't have to wait in line at the ER. Nope, you write the fuck back and skip all the lines. It took a while to diagnose, because nothing showed on the EKG, and the first blood work showed no enzymes from heart damage. But the 12 hour blood work confirmed it was indeed a heart attack. And that impending sense of doom? You gotta listen to that. It doesn't sound like a real symptom until you have gone through it. When I was a young girl, I slept on the top bunk of a set of metal bunk beds, the kind with thin poles and big spaces between them. One night I was laying in bed and I felt ice cold, frozen in terror. I couldn't move any of my body, no matter how hard I tried, until I reached my neck. I realized I could turn my neck to the side, meaning I could peek out of the gap in the side railing. There was a girl sat on the floor underneath me with long black hair covering her face. She was crying. I went to speak to ask her what was wrong, and instead of words coming out, I instantly fell asleep. I woke up the next morning with a fast heart rate but nothing else out of the ordinary. When I was talking to my mother later that night, she was falling asleep on the couch. She said she was absolutely exhausted because she had a nightmare that kept her awake all night. I told her, that's strange, I had a nightmare too, she said, no, it was worse than that, this little girl was crying on the end of my bed all night. Sounds like a naff horror story, but that's how it happened. I've got two, and I honestly don't know which one was more terrifying. I was 12 years old, and my mother woke me up in the middle of the night. She had a flashlight and a big kitchen knife. My mother wasn't a stable person, and she was abusive and violent, so I thought she'd snapped and was going to kill me. I immediately started trying to talk her down, 
asking if she was upset about something and could we talk about it? She was whispering that I needed to wake up because there was something horrible outside. This did not make me feel better. It turns out she heard something screaming outside, called the police, and then decided she needed me to be awake. The police arrived, had a look around, and told her it was probably a fox. Their screams sound a lot like a human woman screaming. I still remember how it felt thinking my mother was about to murder me. She'd threatened me many times in the past and had choked me while beating my head against the concrete floor, so I had valid reasons to fear her. 2. Sleeping comfortably in bed with my husband. I was awakened by him, from my perspective, being violently yanked out of bed. He hit the nightstand on the way to the floor. Fortunately, he wasn't injured significantly. This would be scary enough all by itself, but we'd watched the first paranormal activity movie the previous week, so my first sleep addled assumption was that he was being attacked by a demon. My husband is a veteran with PTSD issues, and sometimes he has terrible nightmares, but usually he just tosses and turns and sometimes cries out in his sleep, this was the first time he threw himself out of bed since we'd started sharing one. So I went from thinking he'd been attacked to being afraid he was badly hurt since he hit his head pretty hard. Scary as hell. My heart rate still goes up a little just remembering the incident. There used to be a drug dealing couple that lived in my building. They were the only bad eggs. Everyone else had no problems or issues with each other. For some reason, the girl never had a key to her apartment. Would always come back at like 1 to 2 AM when everyone was asleep and buzz every outdoor calm to get in. So everyone would turn their buzzers off after a certain time. One time, the guy I was living with argued with her out the window, asking why she didn't have a key, and he wouldn't let her in again. They started swearing at each other, and he went back to sleep. I was in the kitchen, and I can see the corner of the stairway window out my kitchen window. I saw someone I didn't recognize from our floor come up. So I checked through the peephole and saw the woman standing with a weapon in front of my door. I was up because I heard the commotion earlier and was making food. I was holding one of those serrated knives so tight. Thankfully, she decided in that moment not to do anything and went back downstairs. I was up for days after that. They were gone a few months later. Their apartment kept getting raided or broken into. No more bad apples in our building. My ex's new year party. Her father went missing at around 23 because the parents couldn't agree on how to celebrate at 24. Then he comes back to the party at 020 and has taken so many different drugs mixed with strong alcohol at the neighbor's place. He starts screaming at my ex, her mom, and younger sister in their bedroom. I get in there and stand between them. He starts pushing me, and we get out to the kitchen with everyone gone except for the father's brother, his wife, and their young kid. The father grabs two of the biggest knives and goes at me. The brother gets in between us, and I sit down on a chair in a corner of the hall. Me, my ex-girlfriend, her sister, and my cousin run out of the house and start running as far away as possible towards the brother's apartment, where they would meet us. We run through a litany of houses, a completely black forest, and get to the apartment building. We get under a balcony and contact the brother. Father has taken the family car and chased us but ATM couldn't find us. Once the brother is parked close by, we go and meet them and start going to the apartment. While holding up the door for the family, I see the father running toward us. Everyone got an except for me. The father pushes me all the way in against the wall, and I take him down and get in a good couple of strikes to the face. I turn around, and I see the cousin, maybe a 12-year-old boy, look at me, and I yell at him to run up to the apartment. Closely after I start heading up to the apartment, but I've never been there, so I didn't know how far up it is or which one. The brother comes down and takes over the fight, and they are fighting outside for a long time. Meanwhile I'm in the apartment, blood all over with shaky hand and we're all just looking at them fighting outside as the brother is a doorman and wanted to be left alone with him. He pins him down and tells the father to go home, which he does. Oh, what a bad night that was with bad consequences for me. Don't mix drugs, alcohol, and being a shitbag. About 10 years ago, I was chilling with my new boyfriend one night, watching movies. We just put Jurassic Park on, around 2 AM, when he looked over and said, why is there water coming in under the door? It turned out that a water main had burst on the street above my apartment building from the deep cold we were having that winter, and the whole ground floor of the building was filling up with ice cold water. People were suffering hypothermia trying to get their pets out and evacuate, EMS and the fire department were called, and we all ended up up to our waists in ice water. We got our cats and other pets out and got to a warming station, some of the other tenants got taken to the hospital, but we all got out. I suffered a severe lung infection afterward from the cold and stress, but we all made it out alive, and I had to move into a new unit on the second floor. 
we all lost our possessions, but everyone's pets were safe, too, and my boyfriend and I are still together. This one was only scary when my mom reacted to it, but when I was in middle school, our house was robbed. My great uncle passed away in another state, so my mom dropped me off at my grandmother's, went to that state for the funeral, and came back three days later. She picked me up from my grandmother's at about 3 a.m. and brought me back to our house. I was still half asleep after dozing off in the car on the way home, so when we got back, I immediately went to my room to go to sleep, but when I passed her bedroom, I saw the lights were on. My mother has anger issues, and I knew if she found out she had left her bedroom light on for three days, she was going to be pissed, so I went into her room to turn the light off before she saw it. On my way in, a guy was coming out, and we ran into each other. I have an older half-brother who is like six or seven years older than me, and this guy looked around his age, so my poor sleepy brain just assumed it was a friend of my brother's. And, little tattle tell me, I went straight back into the kitchen to tell my mom one of his friends was snooping in her bedroom. She didn't understand at first, naturally, and I kept repeating, one of, brother's friends is in your bedroom. Then the guy smashed out her window to escape, and she immediately realized we were being robbed. She started screaming for me to get in the car, and I started screaming that we couldn't leave our cat behind, I was worried he'd hurt her, lol, and eventually she just picked me up and ran out, calling the police. She was so panicked that the 911 operator kept telling her to calm down and repeat herself, so I had her give me the phone, and I gave them our address and explained what was happening. I also gave them a description of his clothes when they got there, and they found him. We got everything back except for a cheap watch mom got at some fake jewelry place. To this day she still talks about the bastard that stole my pretty watch. I used to work in a haunted lodge. It wasn't bad haunted, it was actually kind of boring haunted. I was technically the front desk clerk, but it was for the graveyard shift, so my primary responsibility was checking in guests and taking care of guests, and my secondary responsibility was laundry, but there were almost never any new guests and everyone was asleep, so. My job was to do laundry. So. I was told, hey, if you hear people walking around upstairs, go check on them. Get them cocoa or snacks as needed. Light a fire if they ask you to, but try to usher them back to bed. So. I'd be working downstairs and hear these big, heavy work boot steps squeaking, and I'd go upstairs. Nobody. We installed a door alarm for the front door to let us know if new guests arrived. That would go off frequently, followed by the boot steps. I'd go upstairs. Nobody. Fucking creepy, right? But that was it. That was all the ghost or whatever did was just fuck with doors and walk around. So I learned to ignore it. Well. One night. I hear the front doorbell ding followed by footsteps. No problem, same creepy paranormal shit as usual. But the footsteps start creeping toward the stairwell. That's weird. They've never done that before. I creep toward the bottom of the stairs. Peer upward from around the corner. The fucking door starts to slowly open. It's all cray act because there was a big ass squeaky hinge, like shit could not have been more terrifying sounding. The door opens. And a pale face hidden by shadows peers down the stairs, looking at me. So I said, ah. And she said, ah. And so I said, ah. And she said, ah. And that's when I noticed, I think she's not a ghost, I think she's a person. So I was like, oh, I'm sorry, welcome to Tourist Lodge, I'm John Walkers, and you know, I just acted perfectly normal, like nothing crazy had just happened. A house down the street blew up last December, it was done deliberately as a suicide by a schizophrenic man who was about to be arrested. The firemen set up shop in our front yard, and it took all night to put the fire out. Me and some neighbors took in some other neighbors that had to evacuate, and we spent all night wondering about how bad the damage was, what would happen to the family who lost their home, they lived on the other side of the destroyed duplex, how long the power would be out, how long the evacuation order would be in effect, if the elderly neighbors would be allowed to get their medicine, where they would sleep, etc. It was pretty harrowing but also amazing to see a neighborhood pull together to take care of those most affected, watch the firefighters and the cops do their job, and see the Red Cross come in to help. The effects lasted well beyond that night though, for months we had cars drive through our neighborhood and turn down that street, a narrow cul-de-sac, just to try to get a look at the crime scene. The police had to post a patrol car to dissuade them, they were getting in the way of the investigators and the cleanup crews.